Greetings, and welcome to the Ninja vs. Samurai role-playing game developer segment reviewing the game's techniques feature. This feature of the AR combat system is the most common of the combat mechanics that separates the trained from the untrained. In this video, we will break down the using of techniques in combat. The methodology can be transferred to other realms of gameplay such as stealth, movement, and other non-combatant situations. But before we get into the video, make sure you strike the like and subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more content. Now that that's out of the way, let's explore the mechanics of using techniques found in the Ninja vs. Samurai role-playing game. A technique is a movement or skill executed or performed by a martial artist. These techniques may be directed at live or inanimate objects depending on the technique and what is presented. In Ninja vs. Samurai RPG, a plethora of techniques are at a character's disposal. In fact, Chapter 5 of the Player's Manual is dedicated specifically to these techniques. Each technique is presented as a chart listed under a heading denoting the category of a technique. This category is also part of the technique's full title. For example, Standing Grapple Technique Front. This may be shortened when players become familiar to Standing Front Grapple or simply Front Grapple. Other elements of this chart are the technique, which is the name or specified version of a category, its description, an explanation of the action to occur during a technique's use, the effects, these describe how the technique will affect a target and any other status effect that comes from said usage. Key energy used informs how many key energy points are needed to employ the technique and experience points to purchase technique. This indicates how many experience points are needed to purchase and add the technique to a character's martial repertoire. There are several types of techniques available to a character and aid in development and strategy. Techniques can be utilized in every facet of gameplay. Techniques are purchased through the expenditure of experience points gained. Many techniques have prerequisites, which are prior conditions that are required for one to purchase it. The prerequisites prohibit the acquisition of techniques until that requirement is fulfilled. To purchase a technique, that a character meets the requirements of, subtract the amount of experience points to purchase technique from the experience points. Write the newly acquired technique's name in the acquired techniques box on the back of the character sheet. Make note of any details such as the key energy used or effects if needed. Before a player can use a technique, they must understand three elements, which are recharge, key energy, and key energy used. The recharge element of a technique informs a player of how often a technique may be used during a turn. This is displayed in the following format. The gray and white spaces indicate a pattern of which the technique may be utilized. Gray represents the technique being used. After a technique is used, the white spaces indicate how long the technique may not be used, otherwise known as the recharge period. This gauge does not mean that a technique may only be used as a first technique, rather that when it is used, it may not be used during the next following melee round, but becomes available after. Another way to understand this gauge is through a ratio. This gauge would indicate a ratio of 1 to 1, meaning that for every melee the technique is used, the player must wait one following melee before it is able to be used again. Key energy indicates how much key energy is saved within the character. This number is found near the bottom of the attribute box of a given character sheet and will fluctuate during gameplay through the acquisition and expenditure of key energy. Along with key energy, the key energy use number allows a player to know how many key energy points must be available to use a particular technique. This number for any technique is found in the fourth column of their corresponding technique chart, located in chapter five. If the available amount of key energy points saved within a character is less than the number of key energy used, the character is unable to employ that technique until enough key energy points are earned. 
A technique may only be used if the character has a stamina point for offensive techniques or a defensive point for defensive techniques. Knowing when to use techniques via the use of stamina or defensive points to perform various skills during the melee allows a player to create their own combinations. To use techniques in combat, a player must announce to the GM that the character will do so by declaring the name of the technique. A technique may be activated during one of three instances, most commonly before the action roll, before the control roll, or for defense before or during the reaction roll. Once the technique is activated, the key energy points are spent regardless of the technique's success or failure and written down on a separate piece of paper. The use of the technique begins the recharge period and the technique may not be employed again until its period is over. For an example of using key energy and multiple acquired techniques, we will look at the character Kanuki Takanashi versus an ordinary white belt level NPC. The information on Kanuki's character sheet notes that she has a myriad of techniques available for use as well as enough key energy points to perform them all. Also, Kanuki's attributes are health points 157, defensive points 10, strength points 11, and stamina points of 9. For this example, the white belt level NPC will have health points of 107, defensive points of 4, strength points of 4, and a stamina attribute of 2. The NPC will also be given 36 key energy points. Here's the situation. Kanuki Takanashi is accosted by a random NPC while walking down a lone dark path. Roleplay is completed and it seems as though there is no way for Kanuki to avoid a physical confrontation with this attacker. We of course start at the control role. The two characters, player vs NPC, get ready to perform the control role when Kanuki announces that she will utilize her key energy and perform the profit technique, a skill that gives plus three to the reaction role. On a separate piece of paper, the player controlling Kanuki jots down the 10 key energy used necessary to perform this technique. Because the profit technique is defensive, Kanuki is automatically on defense, and when the technique is applied, she will lose one defensive point for the melee round. Also, according to the recharge of the profit technique, it may no longer be utilized during the following nine melee rounds. With no other target to choose from, they are able to skip the selecting a target step and move to the action versus reaction roll. The white belt casts 1d6 for his action roll and lands a 5. Kanuki, on defense, casts her 1d6 and lands a 4. However, with the special technique profit being used, Kanuki receives plus 3 to her reaction roll, giving her the advantage and the NPC's first attack is blocked. Although the NPC has an STA of 2, he and Kanuki return to the control roll because the first attack was unsuccessful. In other words, what the NPC wanted to do did not work, and now he needs to rethink or retry his strategy. The NPC and Kanuki control roll again. This time, Kanuki casts a 9. The white belt, however, casts a 12, winning control and is again in control of the encounter. For the next action vs. reaction roll, the NPC launches an unspecified attack against Kanuki during the action roll, casting 6. This attack does not use a technique, therefore no key energy points are recorded. Kanuki's reaction roll falls short of defense as she casts a 3. Kanuki is struck. Kanuki records the loss of 4 points from her health points and will subtract that loss and any other loss accumulated at the end of the melee round. For the second of the white belt's stamina points, another unspecified attack is launched. He casts 1d6, landing a 3 during his action roll. Kanuki casts the same die, landing a 6. The NPC's attack is blocked. The white belt is now out of stamina for this round. The 4 points from the NPC's successful attack is recorded, leaving Kanuki with 153 health points. Kanuki still has 8 defensive points remaining. 
Because they now return to the control role aspect of the confrontation and Kanuki still has defensive points available, those leftover points become a bonus to her next control role. The two cast 1d12 for the control role. Both Kanuki and the white belt land a 10. Kanuki receives plus 8 from her defensive points total, making her control role an 18. Order is now established. Kanuki has 9 stamina points, giving her 9 attack attempts during her turn, barring that the first attack does not miss or is blocked. The white belt has only 4 defensive points, giving him 4 potential blocking opportunities during Kanuki's 9 attack turn. For her first of 9 stamina points, Kanuki declares the standing grapple technique front. Because this is hand-to-hand -hand combat, the NPC is in range for such an action. Kanuki writes down the two key energy used with the previously used points. She understands that due to the recharge, this technique will not be available for use for the following melee. She then casts 1d6 for her action roll, landing a 5, and applies the plus 1 for grabbing gained from using this technique to the roll totaling 6. The white belt's reaction roll fails, casting a 4, and he is grabbed no damage is taken. For her second of nine stamina points, Kanuki selects the front throw takedown technique hip throw, jotting down the five key energy points used. This technique is now in recharge for one melee. Consequently, the standing grapple technique front is now available again after this action versus reaction roll. The combatants cast the die and again, Kanuki wins, resulting in Kanuki throwing the NPC to the ground. Kanuki, having seven more stamina points available, declares the use of mount ground position technique top. She jots down two key energy used. With the additional plus two from the last attack, Kanuki's cast totals a seven on a 1d6. Because the white belt only has two defensive points left and that this technique does not deliver any damage, he decides not to defend against this technique. Kanuki may remain in this position until she decides to get off her opponent or the opponent breaks the mount. Once she gives up this position, the recharge for this technique will begin its two melee round period. Sitting in the mount ground position top, Kanuki remains in control. With six remaining stamina points before another control roll is necessary, Kanuki decides to use close quarter striking technique downward elbow. Four key energy used is written down with the collection of the other amounts used. After a successful action versus reaction roll, Kanuki adds three to her strength points of 11 per the technique and the NPC is struck. With five stamina points remaining, Kanuki declares the use of the arm joint lock technique armbar, giving plus two to strength. With it, she writes down two key energy used. Kanuki casts and lands a 6, while the NPC lands a 5 on the 1d6. Kanuki is again successful, and the white belt is damaged. The armbar technique enters the recharging period for the next three melee rounds. The white belt's defensive points are now depleted, however Kanuki has 5 stamina points remaining in which she may attack unblocked. The white belt will receive full damage from all Kanuki's remaining attacks. This showcases the difference in level between characters and is something to consider when engaging a character whom you are not familiar. After the battle, the game is paused to tabulate damage and key energy points. First, check techniques for any effects that may modify attributes. In this example, Kanuki's front throw takedown technique hip throw requires 1d4 be added. We will say that she cast a 3. The close quarter striking technique downward elbow adds plus two, as well as the arm joint lock technique arm bar that was applied. Kanuki's strength points of 11 receive a modification of plus seven and 18 points of damage are subtracted from the white belt's health points. Next, Kanuki will report to the GM that she has spent 20 key energy points for the conflict due to all of the techniques used versus the white belt. This total is subtracted from the 1,248 key energy points Kanuki Takanashi has. She will have 1,228 points 
when the game resumes. The techniques, combat mechanics of Ninja vs. Samurai RPG offer an infinite number of possibilities. It is in best interest to study your character's skill set and figure out how best to apply your techniques and other tools to maximize damage potential. The proficiency of using a character only comes from the familiarity with your character's ability. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave it down below. If you're interested in Ninja vs. Samurai role-playing game and want to see it succeed, support it on the Kickstarter at one of the available tiers. You can also head over to www.ninjaversussamuraiRPG.com and find downloadable ready-to-play rules and character sheets, or visit the store under the Products tab to purchase your Ninja vs. Samurai role-playing game. You can find us on social media outlets at Alt Realm ENT on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep your guard up.